Welcome to the course introduction. This is the COBA 5 Foundation course. I'm your instructor, Barry Lewis. What we'll go through in this course is an overview of ISACA's new governance framework, COBIT-5. We'll find that as we go through this, COBIT-5 covers the business end to end. It's more than just enterprise IT now. COBIT-5 is all about the business from the stakeholder down through the business and into IT, all working in a common direction. What we want to do is have a framework so that we all understand our individual roles. This will help us effectively govern and manage IT. It's not enough to just have all the pieces of IT put together. One of the things we need to do is make sure the stakeholders are involved, the business involved, and of course, IT is involved, and that we all work in, a, in the same direction so that we're all effectively doing the right things, involving the right areas of our particular expertise to get governance in place. It will also help prepare you, of course, for the COBIT-5 Foundation exam. Yeah, it's an exam, but one of the things we must remember in COBIT-5, it's not the same as COBIT-4. The older exams were a little bit easier. COBIT-5 Foundation exam is now an offshoot and managed by the APMG group and requires some more learning. It requires some study. It requires a lot of memorization. We're going to help you do that. We're going to help guide you through that process. Our whole goal will be to not only understand how COBIT works, but also make sure that you'll be able to pass that exam and get your certificate. So as a result of this course, as you go through all the modules, you'll find out how IT management issues affect organizations. You know, it's not enough that the organization just does its own thing and that IT does its own thing. We need to get IT and management and the organization functioning on the same path. <clears throat> An effective framework will help us govern and manage that. And COVID, of course, will be that framework. And so we need to know why we need a framework and how that'll assist in governing and managing our environment. One of the things that we'll find as we go through the course is how COBIT-5 will help. <clears throat> An IT governance framework is one thing. The requirement for a framework is putting the pieces together, putting the broad picture, getting everybody working on the same direction. And that's what we're looking to do with the COBIT-5 Foundation course. We'll also learn how COBIT works with other standards and best practices. It's not a standalone. It's not the be-all and end-all. COBIT-5 still might require uh, more in-depth or more accurately your organization might need more detailed criteria than COBIT offers. While well, COBIT's designed to be the umbrella, it'll work with those other standards, it'll work with best practices, it'll allow you to put those pieces to support your umbrella specific to your needs. You'll also know, of course, and understand as you go through the course, the benefits of using COBIT-5. How we look at COBIT-5 benefits is, I look at these as the elevator speech. This is what helps us grow the course, helps us sell and market the course. It helps us design those things that if you're meeting an executive, what are the things, why do we need this COBIT thing in our organization? How is it really going to help us? <clears throat> we'll also learn, of course, what the framework's all about, the pieces of the framework, and how they all interface and work together to provide us all those functional elements of a good governance framework. Finally, we'll also know how to apply COVID. You know, a framework's a good thing, but how can we make it practical? How do we use COVID to help us on a day-to-day -day basis? I think as we go through this foundation course, as you learn all about it, some of the things we'll talk about are how can you use it in practical situations the day after you finish the course? And my goal throughout these modules will be to show you not only how to implement it in its totality, but also how to use, pull pieces out and use them 
tomorrow, the next day, to help you in the areas of need from a framework and a governance perspective. There's no prerequisites for this course. <clears throat> we'll teach you everything you need to know. It will require, however, some study. Remember, you'll need to look at the materials, go through the exam questions that we'll provide, and flow through until you understand it well. COVID, of course, is a registered trademark of ISACA in the United States and around the world. And of course, we adhere to that trademark, 2013 All Rights Reserved, and it is used with permission. Module topics, well, we'll start with this course, the overview. We're going to go through the, the big picture, if it will. <clears throat> then we'll talk about the architecture how COBIT fits together, what all the pieces are in the framework. We'll talk about some of the, mo the important changes in COBIT-5. The foundation, COBIT-5 foundation principles, those five key principles, and those help drive and set up COBIT-5 to help the enterprise from top to bottom. One of the other really significant changes I feel in COBIT-5 are the enablers. These are the things that will help make or break your implementation of COBIT. Seven key enablers, and we go through them in detail. We also naturally will talk about the enablers one through seven. <clears throat> and as we go through, these key things are the, the drivers that will make or break uh, uh, any implementation of governance. Those enablers we'll go through, you'll find are going to be uh, crucial elements of making COBIT work for you as you uh, learn all about those enablers. We'll also go through, of course, how do I implement COBIT? ISACA has a seven-phase approach, a cyclical approach, and we'll work through those phases so that you understand the key to putting COVID into place in an organization, recognizing that you can implement COVID, but you can also use COVID. So remember those practical uses that we talked about a little earlier. Naturally, you want to know what's changed. If you're used to COVID 4, then we'll talk also about the differences between the versions that we've had in place and this new version. And we've touched on a couple of those already. The enablers are going to be a key difference. The principles are going to be a key difference. A new concept added to COBIT-5 or implemented along with COBIT-5 is the move away from CMM, capability maturity, and into process assessment. And so we'll go through what that means and how capability assessment is a new module, a new way for you to uh, assess how you move and how good your organization is doing from a governance perspective using the COBIT framework. We'll touch on a COBIT process reference model and walk through that reference model. So you'll understand how all the pieces of COBIT fit together, the domains, the processes, the practices. We'll also talk about the process assessment model. And the process assessment model is how we put those process, uh, processes specifically and use them as an assessment tool. And so the approach that we'll put together <coughs> and use. And finally, There'll be sample exam questions to help prepare you for that exam. And as you go through those, remember, a little bit harder than previous exams, going to require a little more studying, but also a little bit more memorization. This is the curriculum path. And as we move through, the COBIT-5 foundation model sets a stage. It's, as the word would indicate, the foundation. It's our base floor. From that, we'll move forward into the next areas. And one of those could be the implementation module. As we look into doing our assessment, passing the exam, and becoming COBIT-5 Foundation certified, then you might want to say, well, how do I implement COBIT-5? And you'll move into the COBIT-5 implementation module. Same criteria, you'll go through a series of 
webcasts and or courses, take an exam and become implementation certified. You could though choose to look at it from a, I'm more interested in assessing how COBIT-5 is implemented in an organization, what those process capabilities are, and that's the COBIT-5 assessment module. And so the two work independently of each other. You can take either, you can take both. This is the from the foundation up spreading either into the implementation and into the assessment modules. These courses are now available. They've just been introduced. And while we're going through the foundation in, in this particular course, remember from here, you might move forward and move into either or both of those follow-up courses. If you choose to move through the COVID-5 assessment, you could also become a certified assessor. This is a slightly different than being a, a certificate-based course. To become a certified assessor, there's a series of courses you'll have to take. You'll have to be, uh, take the exam, pass at a higher grade, take some additional um, assessment courses and become certified. But from that point on, you could then do capability assessments. And that will be a big change from prior versions of COBIT. We've got a bunch of materials that are available to you to download to help you through these modules. The student guide, of course, an ex exercise, a quiz guide, help you through what will come through at the end, that exam, so that you can pass and get that mark. There's also a training plan, how you might look at how you go through each of the materials, how you might module the things to memorize, the things to do while you're taking the exam. Obviously, the COBIT-5 framework. For most of you, this is the critical document. If you plan to actually really look at this material, know the material well, then that's the document to read fully and to, as we, you go through each of these modules, highlight the courses areas in the module framework in the document itself so that you can go back and revisit those before you take the exam. It's imperative really that you try and memorize much as you can the lists, the definitions, those are all areas that will help you pass that exam. Sample exams as we've talked about, those are the key things that will, it is a, a, as close to the real thing as we can make it for you do well on that sample exam, and you've got a really strong chance, of course, of passing the actual exam and getting your certificate. You can also get the course syllabus, which will guide you through all the steps and all the materials that you need in this course. We've gone through the overview. You understand. Let's get started.